for instance, if you have 3 squared, which remember means 3 times 3, and if you're multiplying it by, let's say, for instance, 3 cubed, which remember 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, okay, then how do you simplify that? Um, well, if you think about it, what this first term is, the 3 squared, I just mentioned it to you, it's 3 times 3, so we're just going to write everything down explicitly. This is 3 squared. All right, And we're now multiplying it by 3 times 3 times 3. That's what the second thing is. And this is 3 cubed. So when we write something down like 3 squared times 3 cubed, this is what's really happening. It's really 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's what we're, we're really doing. But we write everything down as exponents to save space. Now how do we simplify these? Okay, so you see now, when you write it out, it's really 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is the same thing as 3 raised to the power of 5, right? Because now you're multiplying 3 by itself 5 times altogether. Since this is multiplying everything altogether, it's 3 raised to the power of 5. But let me draw your attention to something. If you look at these two exponents here, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Okay, so basically that's how you're going to handle it. You don't need to write this out every time. I'm just showing you this so that you'll understand. Really, the way it works is when you're multiplying something with an exponent times something else with an exponent, if the bases, the bottom numbers, are the same, which is what we're doing here, um, then you just add the exponents together. So 3 raised to the power of 5. And that works you know, in, in terms of variables, just like it does for numbers. I'm just showing you this way to kind of get you familiar with it. But for instance, if you have x cubed and multiplying it times x to the fourth, what would that be? Okay. Well, the, really, the, all you do, first of all, is you say, well, I have the same base, which is x, and the, very, the exponents here are just going to be added together. So you can write this down as x to the power of 7 without even thinking about it. Um, but really, just to absolutely make sure it's clear in your head, what are you doing here? You have x times x times x. This is x cubed. And you're multiplying this quantity times this, x times x times x times x, which, of course, is x to the power of 4. So because they're all multiplied together, now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and that's why it becomes x to the power of 7. It's very important, though, that in order to add these exponents together, the base, which is the, the thing that's being raised to the exponent, they have to match exactly. The variable has to be the same in order for you to add these exponents. Basically, you can consider the bases have to be equivalent in order to do that. So I'm just writing this out for you the first few times to give you some kind of some visual aid to understand why it is the way it is. But really, you never have to do that when you're solving problems. You just need to make sure the base is the same, and then you add the exponents. So, for instance, if you had n, which is a variable, to the power of 3 multiplied by n to the power of 5, how would you handle that? Well, you first check that the bases are the same, n is the same as n, and then you can just uh, follow the rule, which means you add the exponent. So it's n raised to the power of 8, and that's the final answer for that. So you might see something in your book, like you might see a rule for... You know, when you multiply things with exponents, you might see something like a to the m power times a to the n power is equal to the a m plus n. A lot of students, you know, look at this and they don't know what to make of it. They don't understand it. But really, that's all it's saying is that the bases have to match. That's why a is the same. So the base remains the same. And then you take these two exponents and you add them together. That's all you're doing. All right. So let's shift this up. We'll just do a couple quick uh, uh, examples and then we'll... we'll uh, conclude this section and go on to the next one and do some more practice. If you have x to the power of 3 times x, sorry about that x there, let's erase that, um, x to the power of 4 times x squared to the power of 2, the same thing works if you're multiplying more than two things together. This times this times this, this is x cubed, x to the fourth x squared, it's the same base and so all we can do is, or all we need to do is add those exponents together. So it's x to the 7 plus 2 is 9. x to the 9. You just add everything together. All right, similarly, check this out. What if you have 2x squared and you're multiplying it by 5x squared? 
All right. So now it's different because you have numbers in front. Now when you have numbers in front and you're multiplying them, you can always multiply the numbers together. So 2 times 5 is 10. So you just write the 10 down. And then you look at the exponents that you're multiplying together. The bases are the same, so I'm able and allowed to add the exponents together. So it's 10 times x to the fourth power. That is the final answer. Okay? And we'll just do another final one here. What if you had... 3 times t times 4 times t. How would you handle that? Again, you're multiplying two terms together. You have numbers. So 3 times 4, you can always do that multiplication, which is 12. And then you have a t to the first power and another t to the first power. Remember, when we have a first power, we don't write the 1. It's just always known that there's a 1 up there. So 1 plus 1 is going to give you 2. The bases are the same, so it's t to the second power. And that's the final answer. So... Basically, when you're multiplying things with exponents, you may verify the base is the same, carry that to your answer, add the exponents together. If you have any numbers, you can always multiply those together. Make sure you understand these, and then follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to get some more practice with this, and we'll crank up the problem complexity a little bit just to give you extra confidence. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.